This week on FIFA Football Mundial, we take a look at one of the fastest improving national teams in Europe. The Belgian national side of the 80s and 90s were one of football's great secrets. They went to six straight FIFA World Cups, finishing fourth in 1986, and also finished runners-up in the European Championship. They included some of Belgium's greatest ever players. They were a generation that striker Mark Wilmot grew up watching and ultimately joined. I became part of the squad in the 90s. The side had finished fourth in Mexico in 1986, and there were also Belgian club teams doing well in European competition at the same time, reaching the semi-finals and the quarters. So Belgian football was doing very well. The national team took things on with an excellent World Cup performance in 1986, though I actually think we played better in 1990 but we were eliminated by a goal by David Platt in the 120th minute in Bologna. That team had great quality, but that's the magic of tournament play. It goes one way and then the other. Then something happens. It's always so close, but the team of 1990 was a major team. An unused substitute in 1990, Wilmots made his World Cup debut in 94 and netted his first goal in the competition four years after that. A brace against Mexico as Belgium progressed to the second round. But Wilmot's happiest tournament came in 2002, when the by now experienced old hand was captain. 2002 was a great World Cup for me in terms of what I did, but it was also wonderful because of the nature of the team. It's hard to get 23 players working together towards the same goal. There are egos. Everyone wants to do their thing to stand out, and that was the problem we'd had before. By this time, people came together in the right spirit. The football wasn't important, it was the nation that was important. Wilmots has scored five times at World Cups, a Belgian record. He'd have had six, though, but for a highly debatable decision in their second round tie with Brazil. A goal with the match delicately poised at nil-nil, chalked off for no apparent reason. It's OK now, I've let it go, but it's left a scar nevertheless. That's the impact football can have. A football team can bring people together. There are emotions and passions, and people still talk to me about it 10, 12 years on. But I still don't have an explanation for what happened. Since 2002, the Belgian team has experienced a fallow period. But now the last man to captain the national side at the World Cup is hoping to be the man to take them back to the big time. Wilmots has been in charge of the national team since George Lakin stepped down in 2012, having initially been persuaded to join the setup by former coach Dick Avoca in 2009. I spent two and a half years as assistant coach working with the players. We had good objectives in mind. And then the head coach left and the players said, we want to work with you. I couldn't leave my players. And then it all becomes simple, the passion, the goal. We're going to do everything we can to play in the World Cup in Brazil. The supporters are behind us now. The last five games we've had in Belgium have all been played at sold-out stadiums. We've never had that before. We didn't even have it in the great years. That means we have it all now. We're working hard, but we're nowhere near right yet. We've only played four games, but this team is progressing, the team is getting better but we've still got plenty of work to do. But the ingredients are there. Wilmots is blessed with an exceptionally talented group of players. John Chapman, an English journalist who's lived in Brussels for the past 20 years, feels that Wilmots' standing gives him the best chance of managing this talented group. A lot of people were glad when Mark Wilmots came in because he's a very popular figure, as you say, you know, as a player, as a coach now. Um, very straightforward guy. The players seem to love him. He has no real favourites as such. He's not, he's not scared of leaving anybody on the bench. Um, so it's going very, very well. Even without captain and star player Vincent Company for the recent training camp, Belgium boasts a squad that looks as strong as any in the world game. There are nine regular starters from England's Premier League, as well as talent playing in Spain, Russia, Germany and the Netherlands. It's a truly formidable lineup. Everybody is very excited because a lot of Belgians watch Match of the Day. You know, they watch the Premier League. They see these guys scoring goals every week. Uh, they read about the national team. The media love it. You know, they've got. They've got a, they realise what they've got. They've got a pot of gold. 
uh, the Belgian FA realize what they've got. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of excitement, but, but you know, behind that, some people remember that they haven't yet qualified. This is what our work is now. We have to eliminate the egos so that everyone works for the team. That way, their mission is clear and precise. You have to think about the way we play the game. We have lots of running, there's a lot of heart, there's a lot of concentration. This is what it takes to play at the top level. You should never let your concentration go, and if one individual does, then the whole team suffers. This is what we're battling for now. Things are rolling on, and everybody knows they have to play well for their clubs in order to play for the national team. Even now, there's no guarantee of a place in the national team. The sense of belief that the good times are returning to Belgian football was palpable as the Red Devils hosted Slovakia. 20,000 turned out on a cold night in Bruges to watch what they hope will be a golden generation go through their paces. And when their promotional shirts hark back to Mexico 86, as well as ahead to next year, it's clear it's not just qualification on the minds of these fans. They want this squad to achieve. The supporters are happy to be here. They appreciate our traditions and that's great. They tell me we have a lot of potential and we can achieve something. But the worst thing we can do though is to think that we're too good. When we think that, then we're not good at all. Maybe we'll achieve something, but we have to do it first. Only then can we say we've succeeded. We can't celebrate anything yet. We have to watch our attitude. An early penalty gave Wilmot's side of stars the chance to really exert their high-intensity pressing game, bossing possession and keeping their opponents on the back foot. And there was encouragement too in their ability to bounce back from adversity. An 87th minute equaliser looked to have given the visitors a share of the spoils. But there was still enough time for Dries Mertens to pop up and seal the win. It might only have been a friendly, but momentum is certainly gathering. And it would be some story for Wilmots if he can be the man to lead the new boys to Brazil. It will be big for the whole country, not just for me. Of course, I'm not indispensable. There are cemeteries full of people who thought they could never be replaced. But every morning, I'm filled with pleasure and passion to be doing this job. We want this team to be as good as it can be. Of course, if we get to Brazil, I'll be happy for everybody. Everybody Belgian will be happy. They'll all smile and they'll all be proud of our country. Belgium's victory over Slovakia doesn't affect their position in the latest FIFA Coca-Cola World Ranking. They remain at number 20. Their FIFA World Cup qualifying campaign resumes in March with home and away fixtures against Macedonia. England were the big movers in the top 10, rising to number 4 after a 2-1 friendly victory against Brazil. It's their first win over the Selecao in 23 years. Spain remained first, followed by Germany and Argentina. Highest climbers of the month were Burkina Faso, who rose 37 places to number 55. That followed their sensational performance in the Africa Cup of Nations, where they reached the final for the very first time. <laughs>